Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Beyond the Summer presentation of the I League Season 3 Chinese qualifiers. Here we've got Old Boys versus Energy Pacemaker Gaming. I can't say that I'm too familiar with them. They've only got maybe a dozen games in uh, some of the Western uh, records, uh, archives, what have you. But I am looking forward to see how they fare against Old Boys here in this two game series to kick us off this morning. Once again, Thank you for joining us today. I am Blaze, and I will be joined by Flying Zebra, the captain of Team Leviathan, as my co-commentator. How's it going, man? Pretty good. A little burnt from uh, some sun yesterday, but we went ah. to play some Dota, watch some Dota now, so it's all good. Florida life is hard, man. <laughs> exactly. All right, so digging into this one, we saw the old boys perform awesome against Newbie Miracle yesterday, and now we're going to see them once again. It is going to be Long DD back in the drafter's seat, and uh, we'll see. We got to see some awesome, like, uh, big AoE Wombo combo fights from them. DD was really amazing on the Magnus, so that seems to be the kind of draft we're looking at once again. Queen of Pain, Lion, they've got a lot of burst potential, they're looking to bring damage, and of course they can react pretty quick, good with the Hex too, if you're, uh, you're really skilled on the Lion. But with this Juggernaut pick, I'm almost positive they're looking for that Jugger Magnus strat, where Zhou runs the Juggernaut and DD just wrecks on that Magnus. Yeah, it would be nice to see. Um... I'm a little curious about the Lycan ban there in the second phase. Hmm. Especially when you already have the, the Shaker and the Storm. They're both kind of good against Lycan in a way. So I don't know. I guess that's just like a respect ban targeted at somebody. Yeah, I mean, Joe has played it, and he has done some real work with it, and it's just a tempo hero, but it seems they're okay with the Juggernaut by comparison. So, is there anything you particularly fear about a Lycan? When, we, when you're drafting up and you say, well, I can deal with this, this, and this, I want to drag the game out, clearly with Earthshaker Ancient Apparition as my supports, is it just the fact that he's able to demolish towers so swiftly? Um, I think it's, I mean, a lot of heroes can push towers, like Juggernaut can push a tower really quick, too. Mm-hmm. Not quite as fast, of course, but um, what I'm usually afraid of is like the Howl in the laning phase sure. and the mid game, him just running at a hero and killing them really quickly. Sure. Yeah. I mean, just, yeah, it has a lot of physical burst damage. Uh, slow Siege is really good with him. Uh, just in general, yeah, I feel like if they were running a late game strat, that would be the, the thing that I'd be worried about. But right now we've got the Earthshaker as an offlaner instead of the support. We've got Ancient Apparition and Rubik as the supports with Storm most likely mid. And then, of course, the safe lane carry is yet to be decided. So when running a kind of single core, unless it's like the hard, one of the hardest carries you can pick up, I don't feel like you're looking to turtle the game out. I'm not thinking you're trying to stall the Temple of Old Boys that much. Right now, uh, not only do Old Boys have heroes that can be really involved in the early mid game, but they are insane when it comes to scaling. I mean, the Queen of Pain doesn't really fall off anymore thanks to the fact that BKB doesn't inhibit her ultimate. Juggernaut plus Magnus, that in power is just so good for building up, farming faster to get better items to enhance it further with the natural cleave and uh, agility enhancements. So. He's looking really good. They're only afraid of the Spectre. Exactly. Other than that, maybe a Medusa could throw them for a loop a little bit, but even then, I think they'd be able to work around it pretty well. Yeah, Medusa is one of those heroes that seems really, really scary sometimes, but if you kite her around a bit, she's pretty easy to deal with. People would sometimes think that Troll's pretty bad against Medusa, but as long as you just avoid the ultimate, you kind of just pound her and she can't do anything about it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm trying to think of what the energy pacemaker could go to run out this draft and really bring it to a point where they're actually able to compete in the mid to late game. And I would have to say, I mean, if it's not the Medusa, it has to be something still late game oriented like a Morphling. Uh, the two that come to mind are Slark and Morphling, but Slark would be absolutely dominated by heroes like Magnus, Lion, and Queen of Pain. So just overall, they, they definitely need to look at a hero that has less issues in an a against all this AoE damage. But... Last pick coming out from Old Boys. They're looking for another support. It feels like they could pick out just about anything and still be feeling pretty confident in their draft. But they go for the Silencer just to make things difficult for Energy Pacemaker. Now the Storm uh, gets extra lockdown against him. Ancient Apparition's Ice Blast. Oftentimes he doesn't get to target it the way he wants to. Because yeah, as soon as he sends it out the first time, you can hit that Global Silence and it'll just whiff right overhead, only debuffing you at best. And uh, yeah, it just... 
it's a really frustrating thing to fight against. Like, if you're getting hit by Blink RPs and Blink Sonic Waves, and then a Global Silence comes through, like, you don't get to react. Uh, half your team is forced to buy BKBs, which they generally can't afford with this draft. And, yeah, I, I don't think, like, it's the pick that defines the game for them. I think the first four picks do that more so. But this is just icing on the cake. Yeah, it's just going to give them the overall team fight advantage. And basically, anytime Energy Peacemaker goes for a pick somewhere with, like, the Storm Ancient Apparition or Earthshaker even, with that combo, uh, they're just kind of going to get shut down and probably counter-initiated on if they don't play around this cooldown wall. Yeah, I mean... Phantom Lancer's going to be coming out. I actually like that pick quite a bit. I think that that has some real strength in this context. I mean, dodging out against the Juggernaut has Manta style in its early progression to deal with the Silencer. Um, I mean, his illusions won't last long thanks to Cleave, but I don't think that's the point here. He just wants to himself survive and maneuver and do the damage. So I can still see something working with the, the Phantom Lancer. There's a lot of carries that would be shut down by this lineup. PL, at least he's running at least at half potential. So... We'll see. Um, pretty much as we expect for old boys, uh, Joe will be picking up the Juggernaut. DD will be running his offlane Magnus. That leaves Long DD on the support Lion. And H20 will be rocking the support Silencer. So I'm excited to see that. And uh, Energy Peacemaker already selecting things up for themselves. I'm not too familiar with them. Again, they looking at their history, they've, they've uh, taken a game off of Newbie. They've taken a game off of IG as well. So they certainly show some spark of potential but nevertheless it's about a dozen games listed on most of the the major websites there for their records so trying to get a feel for these players it's it's going to take some time Prepare for battle. yeah i'm curious to see what they do with their their lanes here i'm assuming it'll be just a safe lane try lane with the the pl but i think they have some potential to go aggro silencer's not the strongest laning hero the best thing he has going for him is the fact that you can use glaives without aggroing creeps at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's hard to choose the skills on the first two or three levels, too, because like you want a little bit of everything there. Curse of Silent is good in that situation only because it hits three euros, but otherwise you really need that last word utility and, like you said, the glaives harassment. But uh, back into the game here. I had to reconnect real quick, but now we're seeing some damage fly back and around. Ancient Apparition on the run, half HP. Show disengaging, and the Magnus did take some hits, but he's okay. So, luckily didn't miss first blood in my uh, reconnect issues, and we'll just see the bounty runes. Bottom rune is probably going to... I'm, I'm not sure. How do, do you think this is going to break down in favor of EP? It looks like the top rune might, unless they yeah, if they keep running for it, it looks like it'll be going to Queen of Pain. And then, I guess, regrouping, EP are going to give it to the Storm. Yeah, OB is just going to take the easy rune. They know if they just start rotating top, they'll get it for sure. They don't have to contest... And uh, Magnus gets a D ward, so that's really nice for him. Yep, so Sentry Ward down. I'm assuming that yeah took care of a Radiant Observer Ward on the lane. And uh, they actually put this ward very early on to just guarantee the Queen of Pain's lane. How do you feel about that ward? I, I, I feel like if my, my mid player is asking me for that ward, I'm like, you're too greedy, you're expecting too much, we could use that vision elsewhere. But he wants it dead smack dab in the middle of the lane. And uh, how do you feel? Personally, with uh, the way they have the, their lane set up, uh, I think this is totally fine. Um, basically, they're expecting Mag not to get much, and whenever the supports are missing, they're likely going to be putting pressure on mid, and especially the first night, it's going to be really hard to do anything about it. Supports don't plan on leaving top much. The line's going to get like, be as greedy as possible, get as many levels as he can, until maybe around four, he might be able to roam. Three or four, um, and the silencer is mostly gonna zone, so they don't really need the like a lane war top or anything, because they're just gonna be looking for him. I think most of the time. Yeah, and now Magnus walking right into them. They'll get the lift up. There's gonna be some chilling touch damage here. DD, he has a skewer, but doesn't want to pull anybody with him for that extra right click. It's still gonna come through. It is the first blood. Just walking into no man's land. There, he gets the ward down, but at the cost of his life. Very painful. So they get the pull off, they get the first blood onto the Rubik, and that's a pretty good start here. We've talked about the, the four versus five position of a lot of different support duos recently. Uh, Rubik versus Ancient Apparition uh, in this game. Obviously, like it varies based on what your opponent is, how valuable the spell steal is. In this game, would you say one is better than the other? I think Rubik's a, a bit stronger, but 
Um, they do have this kind of combo they're looking for with the Storm and the AA. Mm -hmm. But I I feel like giving Rubik some priority here is ideal because mm -hmm. you can steal a lot of really good spells this game. Yeah. I, I agree about the combo, but I mean, I figure level 6 should be sufficient for that for the most part. Like, your AA right. isn't going to be like suddenly Aghanim Scepter here, like when Storm's in gank mode at 15 minutes. So, yeah, I, I think just make sure that the AA gets 6. So he's not too suppressed, but otherwise. Uh, build up the Rubik. I think that's a pretty good mentality. Actually, looking at the Earthshaker bo uh, item build, I looked at it. He just had a casual branch with stocking up gold. He ends up going for a bottle rush. No soul ring, no boots, just the bottle. Obviously, in this uh, metagame of room control, it'll be pretty powerful just to be able to spam up the Fisher and then go back and grab the rune real quick. But it is kind of surprising to see here. Yeah, I'm not sure if. He's just mm. planning to... Oh. Yeah, they don't have the last word, so it's just going to be the spin damage that brings him down, but that the lack... He's bottling through the spin, he's going to go for the Fisher, and it's going to be a TP in for the Rubik. It's actually going to save his life. Now, Obizo is going to be put in back into the creep wave with his relatively low armor, the last tower hit, the last right clicks. They get the return kill on Dejo. Oh my goodness. That is uh, something you don't see. And I'm not sure if Boots would have done the same for him. I think he would have still been in the spin for most of that time. And uh, the bottle, obviously, slipping during the Blade Fury is huge. Uh, can, wait, did he actually sip through it? Yeah, yeah, is he was sipping. He was still taking hits, but the bottle stayed active on it. Just oh, okay. because the Blade Fury is only level 1. Cool, I actually haven't seen that before, so that's pretty cool. So yeah, I mean that. I mean that works out huge. Like you can pay people in a lot better when you have a kind of a continuous uh, HP restoration factor. Whereas if you're just walking away with boots, it's either you get the kill or you don't because uh, yeah, you've already disengaged to that distance with that extra movement speed. So in this case, it's a little bit better for getting them to dive on you and getting those rotations, which they were clearly ready for with the Rubik. I mean, it's not as common to have the Rubik with the TP that early on, and I gotta say it was really smart of them to have that ready and available for that oncoming dive out of an invis room gank no less like that lion came out of nowhere and they were still ready for it so really great reaction from ep um now of course we look over the cs chart juggernaut's doing pretty good despite his death phantom lancer at 24 cs and then uh, actually everybody's sitting pretty high up here except for the storm why do you think storm's having so much issue this game um i mean quops known to do pretty well against storm from experience and just from seeing this matchup a lot of times in the past. Just the dagger is really hard for Storm. He can't really come up and use the remnants like he wants to. And the Storm or the Quap has kill potential. He's not careful. So Apparently Luck's not on his side either. I just saw him miss four times on a catapult in a row. I don't I don't feel for you, man. That's that sucks. But uh a double null talisman build from Queen of Pain, is that just kind of to cement the lane advantage, or is that to, uh, with the new mana cost considerations for the early Sonic Wave? You kind of go for your max scream, Sonic Wave at 6, and then the null talisman offsets that mana? It's something I haven't really uh, seen many people do, but it's something like that, yeah. It, it gives you a little more uh, early game presence, whereas like if you started getting or going for like an Ags or Treads or something, it just takes a little more time to get that. Hmm. Now, the way I'm looking at it, I mean, why not go for that Null Tally? You have the inventory slots to work with. You're only moving towards Power Treads, and then, like you said, Aghanim Scepter or something like that. So, unless you're going for Orchid, which requires more slots in its buildup, I, I feel like you get a lot of value out of that. Oh, the Fisher, thinking about it. And it is just outside of his range of vision for the lower ward, but of course they've got two. They're doubling up the vision. A little redundant, but perfect to keep Huawei F in the game here. He sees it from the high ground as well as from the central position on the map. They are really emphasizing this Queen of Pain success. I guess it's because the supports are already ready to fight on the top lane. You just don't need vision as much to prepare for that gank. Uh... You mean on the dire side? Yeah, on the dire side, like they're uh, so emphasizing mid, and it's because I guess they don't want to rotate their supports here too much. They just want Huawei to be fine, just based on the uh, vision that he gets. Yeah, and I'm actually surprised about this mid ward because they just dewarded a ward mid, and then they placed another one from pretty much like a few units away from it, so that's going to get dewarded as well. They didn't drop a sentry to kill their sentry. I don't know. That's that's pretty sloppy. Honestly, yeah. And the other ward they placed was seen, I think, unless they were smoked. But they had a ward down. The radiant did. 
um, in that area, so they might get both of their wards deworded. Yeah, that would be really frustrating for YOF, just not their game plan at all. They want to give him a really good start. Not that he's having a bad one so far, but if they start the gank train rolling, they do have the kill potential against him with their lockdown. Um, no points in Electro Vortex just yet. We'll see that probably at level 7 or 8. And uh, in the meantime, I want to check on the levels of Ancient Emperor and Silencer, because I feel when those ultis come online, the team fights shape, uh, take a different shape. So level 4 on the Silencer, not too shabby, and the Ancient Emperor is even further along uh, towards level 5. So LT is doing pretty good, just a lot of uh, continuous pulling through here. Uh, they were able to take care of Magnus's wards pretty easily, and uh, so far he's not missed a single double up. So it's been pretty pretty good progression for him. So um, something I wanted to talk about is the uh, PL skill builds lately. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of different different things people have been trying. I've seen the one 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 build. Um, seen people. I mean, Fan is just not getting any stats, and he's just going straight for the the max lance. Even though I think he's not using it too often in this lane. Yeah, I mean, Magnus is already really heavily zoned out, but it's just kind of that extra bit where it's like, if the lane's not pulled back perfectly, if DD tries to contest the lane at all, he's going to eat a lance to the face, and he's going to be forced pretty much back to base. He has no HP regen whatsoever, so every lance that connects is actually going to be very painful, but like you said, he doesn't get many opportunities to use it. Actually, top, we're seeing some good damage on the silencer here, just Storm balling in, a Fisher set up with the ball lightning, but now Queen of Pain goes for the rebuttal. She doesn't have a second blink, so it's just going to be Storm walking away, and it's going to be the third kill in total for EP. So, feeling pretty good about themselves right now. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty unfortunate for the co-op. Now she's just going to sit here and farm a bit and then leave, kind of wasting her time a little bit. But, uh, it's not too bad. I'm wondering if she's going to, where she's going to look to make her first move with this ultimate. Maybe it's on a support or something. I think a support would be like the most guaranteed kill that she could get. Unless uh, they have the line with it. with her and like a smoke or something. Maybe they can find Storm or PL. Uh -huh. So, I mean, right now they rotate the line to the mid and the Queen of Pain's roaming with her ultimate. Uh, now she doesn't have really the mana to support it. Do you just go back to the laning phase as it was? Or do you still keep the, the Queen of Pain... Uh, on the map and active. Oh, actually, I see what they're doing. They're just going to go ahead with this stack, have Queen of Pain cleared out scream after scream. It's a pretty hefty stack for her to deal with, and it's not the most common thing you do with a co-op mid, but in this case, uh, just one scream away, they'll just right-click it down, and they'll still get a lot of good golden experience for themselves. Yeah, not the not the best stack clear, but it's, it's enough. It's not too slow. I mean, the scream does have a really low cooldown, so... If it works, you know, gets yeah. you ahead. It gets your support nice EXP, and that's the main thing. So sure, support duels right now. Uh, level five support versus level five support in the mid lane here. It's really, it's really interesting these dynamic lanes. Just showing off who could be able to pick up farm for themselves. And uh, like we were talking about, it does become the Rubik as the hero they want to get gold on. So ancient apparition, he'll be warding up a ton. Just happy with level six, and it's gonna be Lay to go for that. Uh, extended progression. For now, just Tranquil Boots Earn of Shadows, which is actually a lot of durability for him. Like, uh, the difference between just a Boots Rubik and a Tranquil Magic Stick Earn of Shadows Rubik, it's immense. Actually, he can survive through so much more. But we'll see right now. A smoke gank coming through. Radiant, do not see this. And it should be a uh, pickoff down bottom lane. They're going to go bring three down. They don't have a global silence, but they're looking to steal some int. Yeah, no finger either. This this could be this could be turned on them actually pretty hard if they're not careful. Um, Storm has a TP on him right now, and they does have his ult. Yeah, he's thrown it top though, so we'll follow that at least for the moment. But it looks like it's going to be Juggernaut it's falling back, avoiding that completely. Yeah, it's a little off there. I think they do see the they ping out the line and the co-op, I think maybe okay. they saw them. Yeah, I mean, they're clearly missing and roaming, so this is the time to gank, if any. It's going to be a nice Spirit Lance, though, coming out onto the Silencer. He will not be hit by the Cold Feed, and it's actually going to be Quixotic Wave to bring down the Ancient Apparition. And uh, Magnus looking to return a little bit more. Skewer does not connect. RP does, but he doppelgangers it. Oh, what a play. Now, locked down, the Magnus gets finished off. Just an unfortunate whiff and uh, an odd committal, considering the Sonic Wave on cooldown. 
I don't really don't even think if you connect with that RP, you're going to be able to follow it up with much, but he just wanted something. He's been frustrated this game, and it clearly shows. Yeah, and this this PL build, now it's starting to show what his, his plan was with this. He's, he's leveling his skills and uh, not opting for the stats because he's just going to buy stats. He's just going to fight mm. with those. Um, he's he not a fan of Phantom fighting. Rush, though. Yeah, I think he just wants the, the doppelganger because it's actually really good against these heroes, like for Jug, Mag, as we just saw in the uh, the co-op. You can dodge so many things this game. So just keep spamming that out, try to avoid what you can, and of course he gets a lot of push in here onto the tier 1 tower. That'll drop pretty low. Glyph's already on cooldown, so I think that'll be the first tower to fall, and they don't really have many more tools to defend it with. In the meantime, we've got Rubik. He's got spell steal. What skills are he? Is he looking to steal? Obviously, the RP is like the big one. Sonic Wave is pretty sweet too. Um, Finger of Death. Any any of line spells really, except for the Mana Drain. Yeah, I think the main ones he'd probably want right now are either Shockwave or like Earth Spike. Those are like the two really nice ones to have on Rubik at this stage. One, uh, they both let you farm really easily. Especially if you have like mana boots or a soul ring, mm -hmm. and um, they're gonna do the most damage, which is what you're lacking at this stage. It'd be nice to have like a hex, but like Earth Spike is, I think, more preferred right now. Yeah. TB top from Rubik. Uh, even though he's up against the Juggernaut with Mask of Mana's face, but it seemed a little dicey if he wasn't in the right position. But they just placed another Observer Ward underneath a Sentry Ward, so it's a, another freebie. This is. Really awkward from old boys, giving two wards away for absolutely nothing uh, right underneath the sentry wards. Obviously, they didn't necessarily know the ward was there. I don't think there was an observer D warded previously, but it's just it's just an unfortunate occurrence that's happened twice this game. Yeah, and it's making things pretty hard for them, honestly. The, the lion has a little harder time roaming, same with the co-op. The mag has to play a little bit more safe if he doesn't see people. Things like that. It just uh, like makes your farm a little bit less efficient and your movement's a little less efficient as well. I gotta say, I really like how EP's played this landing phase. I mean, now they're starting to get a little bit more aggressive. They've pushed down on the tier 1. The PLs are, are gonna be farming. I, presume, I thought the jungle, but he's actually just going for push once again. And they've got a really good kind of flank coverage right here. Like, they've they've had the, they have this ward kind of covering towards the bottom rune. Doesn't necessarily see it, but they see towards the mid, towards the bottom rune. And then they also have the secret shop covered on the dire side. So they see ancient farming from the Juggernaut, they know when to gank him, and that's probably their best opportunity. So we'll see the Ice Blast fly through, not do too much. Storm is in a little bit of danger here if they get the full combo on him, but they're gonna go to the east, they're gonna go to the hero they actually see on the map, and that's the Ancient Apparition. Lowly AA down bottom, still going for a Midas Rush. It looks like he'll have the recipe in time, but just barely, oh no, gets bursted too fast. Just before the recipe, that's, that's pretty awful. Uh, but they do get a tower mid because of that, so... Yeah, so he'll have it, the recipe anyways, it's just not as... He still loses gold in that. Echo Slam coming out! Earthshaker with a Blink Dagger here, 15 minutes into the game, but he gets turned on heavily. The Shockwave still needed to come out earlier. If he got the Shockwave on top... Oh, Telekinesis onto Long DD! Finding the Lion out at the very least is gonna give them a nice return kill. And, uh, yeah, they're actually... Okay, defend their tower, take a tower mid, and then essentially still get some good response. I mean, the Earthshaker does die, as well as the AA, but they get the Lion and the Silencer. Yeah, and keeping their tower safe is a really big deal. It's like, huge, because Old Boys is already lacking in map control with their, their warding situation, so it's right. going to shut them down a little bit more, and AA is just going to go back to farming. He's going to have his might as soon if he wants it. Yeah. I think they wanted to do a little bit more by when they were unveiling their Blink Dagger, though. That's one thing, is the surprise right. factor of that Blink Echo. It usually is going to get you a net advantage in kills, and in that case, they just drew even, which is not the ideal. So, yeah, I would have to say that it wasn't the best thing for this Earthshaker, but still, picking up a 15-minute Blink Dagger in the offlane. I've seen this a couple of times, a few different teams go for this uh, Boots Bottle build, and then just rush out Blink Dagger, and they can get it 14, 15 minutes in the game. It's ridiculous, like, they're, the time that they can get it. And we're actually seeing a, even more farm for this Magnus, surprisingly. We're actually seeing that he's able to bring himself up to Arcane's plus Blink Dagger here at 16 minutes. So I don't know where he got that 40 CS, but it has put him back on the map. 
Yeah, they're both just like spamming out their uh, their nukes to get see us often. Especially the mag, but the their shaker as well in the laning phase. He was throwing out a lot of fissures just for CS. Hmm. So, so just playing playing their heroes a little bit more passively. Yep. So they did get the D ward in the secret shop. Now they're going for a smoke play here, and they're going to run right into ancient apparition. He's throwing the ice blast down towards oh. the Queen of pain, but there's an RP onto three, and there's the old boys we're looking for jumping in, finding the kill opportunities. Great combo, and uh, just yeah, a quick jump with the blink dagger that just recently came online. Very nice movement, tier 1 for free, and uh, yeah, PL just scrambles for farm in the meantime. Yeah, that was just a little bit of tunnel vision from EP. They just were looking only at the target in the lane. They didn't even notice the lion uh, was right next to them when their smoke got revealed. And then the mag just got an easy RP as they're all just running in a straight line. Still though, we've got an orchid on old chicken. I mean, he's going to be able to... do provide really good silence utility. If he doesn't silence the silencer, it's most likely the global will come out in in response to his initiation, so that's a concern. But overall, if you see like a Magnus coming or a, a right now a Juggernaut trying to initiate against you, you silence them quickly and they you prevent the ultimate, which is huge. Big exchange here in the mid lane as we see the Queen of Pain get nuked down, but the storm shortly thereafter and Finger of Death actually stolen to send it back the other way. Now a nice Fisher getting distance from Sho, and that's actually gonna keep them uh, with a kill advantage. Again, Queen of Pain going down early this time. She's looking for Orca too, but Storm's already there. So that's a, a really big farm advantage for him as we see. He's just barely leading on net worth, but his he didn't go with that second ult alley. That's the difference right there. Yeah, it really. And um, I think from the Quap next, we're probably going to see a, a Hex or maybe just straight up a BKB, I guess. Maybe even a Yule's. And we'll probably see like a really similar story from the storm, except he might go for a bloodstone. Hmm. Yeah, no soul ring at all, actually. What do you think about that with the new soul ring and how people are using it? Um, I think it's a preference thing. Maybe some people have. Wow, big ball with the ice blast. Exactly what you're talking about. The combo you're looking for. Orchid with the uh, deep ball lightning. Three points in vortex sets up the blast, and that's a really good, good kill. Obviously, uh, delays the mantis style. Oh no, he still gets the mantis style, so he will be able to dispel orchid in the future. But obviously, in the, that case, the stun was really the more critical. Yeah, even if he can dispel the orchid, if he orchids him and it's still like if it takes him too long to manta it before he can get a pull, that the same thing will still happen. It, mm. it won't actually change too much except he'll be a little bit tankier and he might he might be able to get a spin off and survive. But Storm can I mean even if he's spinning, if he has the, the, the debuff from the ice blast, yeah. He can still tick and he'll still take hits from the storm. The storm can still zip after him and hit him a little bit. Yeah. Still could uh could be a repeat performance, but it, it should, generally speaking, help with survivability. I'd say half the time it'll help in that situation, half the time it won't. But we're going to see a quick echo slam just for the stun and comboing it up. They'll bring down the mag. So uh, keeping away from the four staff as well as just getting more kill gold. Now we see silences back and forth. Orchid between the two heroes and a global on top. So a lot of silences, a lot of potential lockdown. And uh, yeah, that's just going to keep them both... Uh, at bay but yeah i think actually now looking at the fact that he's not only up against the orchid but also this silencer the old chicken probably still needs to go for the bkb yeah probably but some storms will just they just alter their playstyle instead of um, okay. altering their items sometimes like they know there's this global they have to play around they'll just you know time the cooldowns and then when it's down they can play aggressively when it's not down they can just farm more more so and then go for they can still go for picks and if the global is used they just run away and it's fine ice blast right into the pit at the perfect time to shut down shio's attempt to go on roshan healing ward mask of madness neither will save you they do have the rp to cover it if they want to go back in shortly but it definitely doesn't allow them to just two-man sneak it they have to uh bring more to bear against Roche. but we see up top the tier one getting pressured and it looks like that's going to go for free Free glyph used as well, but bottom lane, we're going to see a gank come through, a quick jump on DD, and they will connect with the stun before he blinks out. Pretty delayed animation, but still the kill, and that's what they're looking for. Yeah, this is going really well. The last few minutes for EP have been really good. After that rough three-man RP into a, a tier one tower, now they're, they're looking fine. Mm-hmm. 
Very much so, and I just gotta say that, like, other than that RP, I don't really know what's gone that well for the old boys. Like, overall, they've been farming all right on the Juggernaut. He's keeping CS with the, uh, Phantom Lancer, but I don't know if he necessarily scales harder than PL. PL still has a lot of scaling potential, and he directly counters the Juggernaut one-on-one. -on -one. It's only the Empower that really pushes Juggernaut over the edge towards the late game. Right, but the other thing is that the uh, PL is very good at killing Healing Ward with his conditions and the charge. Oh yeah. Something definitely to consider. And also, I mean, he's going to go build Defusal, so he can purge the Empower off of Juggernaut most of the time. That's a good point, actually. That's something I was thinking about, but... Yeah, that's really nice. And it looks like the Storm, the storm is going for a BKB, I mm -hmm. think so. Yeah, and it just it's the easier way to play to play this game. Like essentially, you right. don't have to cha modify your playstyle. You just as soon as the orchid or global comes against you, you just pop the BKB, and you can still kind of play as you want to, as you traditionally do. But we're gonna see a really like a lot of grouping out, but not really a lot of action. I mean, Long Diddy just picked up the blink dagger. They would love to be smoking right now, but nobody's got it on their person, nobody's got in the shop. It's just like, why are they kind of sitting around uh, essentially baiting the Queen of Pain while she's still on her side of the map? I guess it's to distract from the Roche Pit, but we're gonna see really quickly the Ice Blast tick Queen of Pain very low here. I don't think she goes down with a level one Ice Blast, but still forcing her back, getting the Echo Slam out, nearly netting a kill. It's still is Joe though, who's trying to farm things up. It's gonna be a ball forward, actually bringing down the Queen of Pain. The global out not fast enough. They will have her combo up on the Storm and certainly bring him down. Can we get another steal on the Finger of Death? It is gonna be, oh man, Lei going for the Shockwave and the Finger of Death, getting kill after kill. Now Didi pulled in without an RP, now the Omni Slash, but there's so much to mitigate it. It's not bouncing to illusions, mostly to heroes, but it doesn't net a kill. Double buyback, double TP to the bottom. They do get an RP onto two, but the follow through, it's delayed. The Sonic Wave comes, but now doppling up. Fan's still in this fight, and he's going strong. YYF will die back. Zhou has to get this kill and then run. I don't know if he can really fight this, but there is no mana on the Rubik, so maybe. Fan will finish off the Magnus for another dieback, but the Fisher connects onto Zhou. They're controlling him too hard, and now he might go down for the second time. Aegis broken once, trying to Manta and phase away, and he will disengage. Thanks to the fact that Fan doesn't have a Diffusal Blade. Long DD looking for vengeance. He does drain out his mana, so no dop. Oh, the magic stick. He will dop all away. Oh, and he's going to go on the run here. Diffusal just picked up. Oh, man. This is just an insane fight here. The Fisher looks to, to break it down, and yeah, it is going to be the conclusion to this extended clash. So in that fight, Old Boys takes the Roshan, gets the Aegis on the Juggernaut. That's a solo kill golden experience, and... Then they fight abysmally, lose, I guess, seven heroes if you count the Aegis. They die back, they get team wiped, and they lose the Aegis. It's just uh, a catastrophic fight for old boys, with the exception of Roshan. Yeah, and oh man, that, that was just really rough. This, this double ganger spell is, is just so good. It dispels mm -hmm. so many things. It even dispels the silencer, the last word. I just saw that. Uh, the second, yeah, it dispels the second part. That's Oh, wait, no, you're right, you're right, because he had it, and then it didn't actually take effect when he cast his doppelganger. Yeah, it didn't do anything. So huh. that's, I'm not that's sure if that's supposed to be that way. Because normally, I don't think last, the first part of last word is supposed to be dispellable. I know the second part is, but I, I thought at least the first part, it stuck to you. That's what I've seen in the past, but doppelganger is a, a new skill with some new rules, perhaps, and maybe it's just uh, Imba that way, but... Wow, now we're in a position where Old Boys, I mean, they just threw so much money at EP there. They get really nothing permanent over their, their about the fact that they were able to sneak the Roche, and they lost so much more overall. I mean, if the I imagine if the PL had a defusal there and is actually able to kill the Juggernaut with the Purge and the Mana Burn, like that would have been just like Old Boys completely without any way of coming back into this game. But... With Juggernaut surviving throughout everything, he did go up to 14.5k net worth. So while his team as a whole suffered, I mean Magnus is back down to 6,000 net worth, he still is able to pull ahead on the Jug, and that's the important thing. Yeah, he's still doing really well. Um, 
and of course denying the Roshan to EP after such a big fight is good too. Hmm. I, I wouldn't say EP is all that Roche dependent though, though. I mean, like, obviously you want right. the Aegis on the Storm, but it's not like they drafted around going for Roche early. Oh, it goes Slam going on the back line. Wow, I have down immediately for 57 seconds. Double kill for Fan. Oh my. They just open up a can of whoop ass on old boys, and suddenly three are dead. Tier twos are dropping. And it really feels like old boys just don't have, um, like, a second to respond. If there was, a, like, half a second to get a global off, at least one person could survive that. But, really, they don't get an inch. Yeah, that's just really good play by EP. Finding all the right heroes with all the right heroes. The Storm found the Sansa right at the start. And the uh, Echo Slam comes out, and it's a really easy fight from there. And it's all got to be on this Juggernaut. If anything works out this game, it's going to be on Shiro. He finishes up his Eye of Scotty. The Manta, of course, we've talked about how valuable it is. Uh, how does he carry this game on his shoulders? Like, what item can he go for next? Uh, I mean, does he have to go for a Battle Fury anyways on top of the Empower? I don't know. Um, honestly, because he's like, they're relying on him so much, he might just have to get a BKB. Okay. Just because of the Earthshaker and the... Ruby Glyphs and the Orchids. Uh, I don't know if he has too much of an option if he actually wants to sit there and be able to right click with the Empower. Sure. Otherwise, I would say, you know, just grab an Abyssal Blade and man fight. Mm -hmm. But then you're walking a dangerous line where the Ice Blast, which is. And moving gradually towards Aghanim Scepter is going to bring you down pretty quickly here. The reason I was talking about the, the possible Battle Fury is you look at a fan's next item. He's going to have a Heart of Tarascar Satanic very, very shortly. Yeah, he's starting to get the tanky items, and that's when he starts to get pretty scary. Especially with how he uh, he built up. Mm -hmm, he, already like, he already has so many stats. Like, really good progression from Fan in general. He's level 17, he's got pretty much every item you would want on the Phantom Lancer, and... This is, I mean, only 28 and a half minutes into the game. They're going to get a great scout out, and Ice Blast comes through with the ball lightning. Oh my gosh, not a second to respond. Fisher is on cooldown, so they won't be able to pin down Chio, and it is going to be just them on the run, but that was that was old boys looking for that gank. That was looking for them looking for the opportunity, but one Radiant Observer Ward scouts out everything, and boom goes the dynamite. Yeah, the EP awards have been really good this game. They've seen pretty much everything that's been going on all game. They even saw the Jug actually soloing the Rush earlier, but they decided to just let him do that and just take all the kills, and then they can fight him afterwards with his Aegis while he's the only one alive. So Man, All of just... their planning has been really good around these wards. And they just don't give old boys a chance to use any of their ultimates. Like I feel like old boys' the lineup is really strong when the ultis come out, but so far they haven't had a chance to use them, but once or twice in a really offensive fashion. Yeah, I mean we saw it earlier in the game when the, the RP hit three people, they all just instantly died. But if they're not getting that, um, I don't know how they're winning these fights. Do you think H Wing just has to stay further away from everybody? I feel like he, if he was like two screens further back then it would give them more potential for the global to come out. Obviously, that risks being scouted out by the Storm Spirit, and he'll just jump him uh, individually. But if you know there's no wards underneath you, like where those two sentries are right now for the Dire, couldn't that give him an opportunity to just kind of hide out over there and just global from a distance to try to break down this initiation that's devastating them so far? Yeah, I, of course you don't want to be... I think just being really close to your base, pretty much, there's, there's not many options you have, though. So, yeah, I think you're kind of um, hitting the nail on the head there that in this situation, you pretty much just have to get the global off. Um, not getting it off for, like, the past three fights has just been game-losing, so... That's that's why you picked the hero, right? So, you, ha you just have to make sure you get it off. Yeah. I'm actually looking at this, and... Realizing now that 820 has not been in range for a single int steal. He has gotten zero kills, one assist that he wasn't in the radius for. Yeah, he actually just has not been able to really make the use of his hero and the ability to soak the enemy's intelligence. Are you kidding me, chicken? Jumping in as deep as can be. Now the global comes through, and he's actually running low on mana here. He'll pop the BKB and just man fight it with right clicks while the... the <laughs> 
Ugh, Earthshaker just cleans it up on the silencer. Now, nice damage coming out. The Queen of Pain blinks away. Omni Slash will wreck through this with the Empower active, and he's actually doing some really good work, but now has to disengage as the Ice Blast dispels. DD had a decent RP there, but now he's getting control pretty well, though. Spirit Lansom, he's without cooldowns, and he will go down. Only the two cores remain, only in exchange for the Earthshaker, and now they look at high ground with the Creep Wave pushing in. Yeah, and that awkward fight started because they were doing some greedy dewarding. They mm -hmm. decided not to put the sentry on the high ground. Instead, they decided to blink up with the lion yeah. deward, going for the, the greedy sentry to get multiple dewards. Yeah. Punishable offense, and now YYF without a way to dispel the orc. It is going to take a big hit here. The ice blast is going to look to shatter him. It's level two, so he will go down on the front back line. And Joe caught out without a hope or a prayer on the front. Uh, no empower, no way to fight. And uh, obviously he didn't have Omni Slash either, so I really, I'm not sure why he's not like way back by the effigies. He's like right there by the tier 3, and unless they're looking to, to fight right then, which they clearly weren't, that seems like a mispositioning. But either way, Shio buys back, it keeps the tier 3 alive, but it costs him even more. Yeah, and this is, this is now becoming a buyback to farm, which is like the worst buybacks you can have. Yeah, he can't even last it, can't even just generate any income for himself. It supports time to shine because, really, that's all that's going to be getting the gold here. Yeah, he, he literally is just sitting around. He's got nothing to do. So just an unfortunate situation. He got killed inside the base, and then they just run away, so... And uh, now the Aghanim Scepter coming out on the Ancient Apparition. He's not level 16 just yet. The Midas came out pretty late, but it's still uh, Aghanim Scepter, 17 second duration. At the very least, it nullifies the benefits of the Mask Madness, other than the attack speed during Omni, and of course the Healing Ward. So yeah, just keeping them suppressed, looking for more Shatters. Uh, it doesn't even matter if the fight gets stretched out longer for the old boys. Like They have to actually start the fight. They have to initiate. And as far as the ward coverage goes, they're really lacking, so it's really hard to find that opening. But they, that's the only way they're going to actually be able to take clashes, is somehow find a way to engage without smoke and deceit, and it's, it's difficult. Yeah, the, the main thing they're looking for here is um, huh. some, some control around the Roche Pit for old boys. That's probably where they feel like they're going to make their comeback play. They yeah. have their, all their wards focused around there. Certainly, but Ancient Apparition has that gem. We'll see if he gets the opportunity to D-Ward at all. Ice Vortex plus gem is really good for scouting those cliff wards, but uh, I don't think they'll expect the mid one at the very least. That one's very uncommon at this stage in the game, but it should be what kind of helps collaborate for the, the Roche fight. So we'll see right now. Rubik just chilling out in the pit, and uh, everybody's just grouping out, waiting for an opportunity. The problem is, if they commit to a Roche fight and Chio goes down, that's game. Like, straight up. You can't win without Juggernaut, and he essentially diebacks with a delay there if he goes into the pit at this state. Right. That and um, the three cores of old boys are all still looking for their BKBs, whereas um, on EP, they have the two BKBs on the Storm and the Earthshaker, and then the Peel just has his tanky item. So they're all pretty much good to, good to fight, and old boys is still lacking something. Earthshaker hanging out up here by Ancient Apparition. There's no, uh, the gem isn't in radius, so Earthshaker's actually in a, a rough spot, but they don't really have the heroes to punish it right now. They can't go in without risking the Juggernaut's life, and that's just something that will lose them the game. So Aegis is fed away. Does it just go to the storm? Looks like it. Old Chicken yeah, Man, this storm has been storm. insane. Like, I, I look at some really aggressive NA players, and I, that reminds me of, like, the, the store spirit I love to see, but really, Old Chicken has been just massive on this hero. Obviously, a very large part of it is the vision you've been talking about, but even still. Yeah, he's just using the uh, ball lightning damage really well. Um, some people forget how much damage that spell does, mm -hmm. but a lot of people, like, are starting to learn just how much it outputs and they're they're like making sure they stay really far away from a fight to make sure that um they get all of that damage from or most of the damage from the ball lightning rather than like zipping around a team fight so much they just use it to get a lot of the burst at the start because it's pretty hard to avoid especially with how fast it is a level three 
And uh, another interesting way to look at it is if he burns through all of his mana in the initiation, then he doesn't really care about orchids and globals and being disabled and such. It's just like he does what he wants to and then pops a BKB and just right clicks from there. And then after all that stuff wears up, off he might have a few hundred points of mana to use towards uh, actually chasing and pursuing the fight. So it's just a, a different way to look at it, is essentially if you're silenced, you, you might as well be out of mana. And in this case, he uses most of his mana to get to the fight because that's how long his jumps are. But looking over at KDA, he's not the one with the most kills in this game. How did the Rubik get 9, 1, and 8? I don't know. I guess just some shockwave finishes on top of the, the Ice Blast ganks. Uh, he's doing it really well for himself, though. Mm -hmm. He's I got mean, some, some strange items, too. Super... I guess he's going for Bloodstone. Yeah, super tanky build. Goes Bloodstone, Yules, Force Staff, Urn. This guy just, he won't die. But yeah, he's stolen Finger Death a couple of times. Just wants to survive through the fight. It's actually really good to go for HP items against the Cleave damage as well as the Sonic Wave. Pure damage as well as, they call it enhanced. It's kind of physical. It's not mitigatable, but it's physical. And uh, those are the two damage sources that he really has to worry about is the Cleave damage and that. So it's kind of important just to build up HP since you cannot actually mitigate it. There's nothing better than just to go for that and uh, survive that way. Ghost Scepter would be like your your standard pickup in this game when you're only doing so-so. But this guy is rocking out almost 10k net worth. He can build up the HP items and that Bloodstone will do some work. Yeah, I would have maybe liked to see in Ags, but... I mean, at this point, it doesn't really matter what he gets, as long as it's something that helps him tank up a bit. Mm -hmm. Nope, we're going to see, just dropping down long DD again, trying to go for some D-Ward play. It's not going to work out for you, man. There's is going to be an RP, but just onto the Rubik, committing like four spells, and there's an Echo Slam coming in! Now looking to clean up the fight, the Rubik, he's still alive! Oh, he'll be cleaned up by the Sonic Wave. Joe goes in pursuit, now dueling out with Fan, but the early Doppel doesn't block the Omni Slash, so Fan is going to be killed off by the Juggernaut, and Joe will disengage. So this time around, they get the global off. The Juggernaut really gets uh, to survive and do some work, and it is going to be EP for the first time in a long time losing out on an engagement. The Storm didn't commit hard enough with that Aegis. Uh, the timing wasn't exactly right, and that Doppelganger did not dodge out the Omni. Oh, man, jumping in, though. Now trying to go in and punish Joe with the Hex, with the Orchid. There's an Ice Blast connecting. Oh, he's so close to shattering. It's going to take him down pretty low, but I'm not sure if it's enough. Uh, man, it's a long, long debuff, but it just isn't doing enough damage just uh, by itself. It looks like he will survive just fine. Didn't get anywhere near to about 300 HP, so he'll be back up to full shortly. I'm not sure what happened with the, uh, the Hex there from the Storm. I thought he got him. Maybe he Hexed the Creep or something, but it looked like he didn't have the time to get a pull-off. Uh, to chain with the hex. Hmm. I, 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 was, I looked. Off, I clicked but... on him about like 15 seconds after everything, all the dust settled, and it was still off cooldown. And it's a pretty long cooldown, so I think he actually just didn't use it initially. He definitely had it, and he used it on something because okay. I, I heard the sound. I just gotcha. I think he missed it, unfortunately. Or else that would have been a pretty uh, pretty clean kill. All right. So I mean, that's just not the initiation they were looking for. But they've got so many this game. I think they still have some room for error here. They have this beyond 20,000 golden experience advantage, and they do find a Queen of Pain pickoff. Actually, kind of surprising, but you connect with the Fisher, you connect with the, all the, the jump from the Storm, the Hex, and it's a, a pretty easy pickoff that they're going to have to start playing around better. Honestly, like they're acting like the Storm doesn't have the farm that he does, but yeah, that's just going to get them killed more and more and more. Take it till you make it. Nice. But uh, the Juggernaut... In, well, plus Magnus actually makes this a dangerous proposition to go high ground. Yes, it's a 5v4 advantage, but I actually don't feel like they're that much stronger in sieging now than they have been in the past. I, I, there's some real risk in this, but as long as PL's the only one forward, I guess it's definitely doable. Yeah, now that he's got a butterfly, he's, he's not worried about too much of anything. The drug can't really kill him anymore, I think. Oh, man, the <laughs> fake outs from Fan, doppling, dodging the skewer, wasting the global silence. Now now he's got to be really confident. Like, there's nothing to stop him as he goes in for these racks. We're going to see a nice earth spike. Joe with the empower, looking for the play. Refresh that empower, man. DD, help him out. But racks are already gone, and uh, yeah, that's going to be one of three lanes. I feel like 
EP should have just gone straight to bottom. There, there's still no global up. I'm not sure why they decided to walk Well, the top's top weaker, isn't it? Oh, the HP on the tower. Yeah, it is, I guess. I mean, if they have the creeps in the base, it's fine. Touch an Earth Spike fan. He lo he's got to love this doppelganger. Like, he, probably the second that, that change came through to rework for the hero, his face must have lit up because he is just making things happen with this spell. But now we're going to see Joe lose a little bit of mana here, pin prick at a time. But he's got that Scotty, so he can fight through it pretty well. Um, at this point, again, it's still choke point uh, gaming against AoE drafts. It's it's still a little difficult in my mind. There is no global, as you mentioned, but they can't really put anybody but the Phantom Lancer in the base. The Earthshaker will look to respond. He's got his blink BKB, and it's actually going to be the ball lightning in, just a D ward. But okay, um... And now we see Fan for his staff out. Nice play there. And he has the doppelganger ready. So as unless he gets RP'd, he's fine. Now the Omni Slash comes through, but it bounces to the Illusions. Just eating the Illusion Fan. Manta dodging a Shadow Strike. The Heart Region helping him out. He will get one more doppelganger. And he's just surviving through everything. They're distracted so much by this PL. And now they get turned on. YYF goes down. Joe losing life. Has to buy back again this game. And PL's just going to regen with the Heart. Fan really just put him through the ringer. Kept on running, kept on jumping, Manta dodging, and even the Doppel. And he just outplayed old boys here. Yeah, I'm not even sure if, if Zhou had a good chance of even killing Fan without an RP to set it up. Just because of the evasion coming out. Man, it's just so frustrating. Now they get the RP, but they're going to get lifted up before the skewer connects. Ice Blast onto two, and they're just going to take the racks now. No problem at all. Like, don't chase Joe to back to the fountain. They're going to chase Joe back to the fountain. They're going to just stun him up, and down he goes. Oh, that's GG. They shatter him. They knock him down. And that is EP, Energy Pacemaker, taking down old boys in game one of this two-game series. Who would have thought it? I mean, they, they had some great coordination and team play this game on EP. There was like the one hiccup where they um, didn't think about the Magnus when they were going with their smoke to bot lane. And that was like the one thing that slowed them down. But from from that point on, they were just making the plays all over the map. And it was just old boys trying to respond and they couldn't handle it. Yeah. Before this morning, I honestly had only heard of two of these players, but looking at it, it doesn't feel like they had a single weak point. Their supporting cast was strong just because silently they were finding all the great opportunities to ward. Obviously, they had a lot of gold in their pocket to do so, so maybe we'll see them play under more pressure later. But right now, they had so much, such an influx of gold, they were warding and de-warding very actively. They were involved in a ton of kills. The Phantom Lancer and Storm Spear were MVPs. They were played out of their minds this game in terms of how the Storm initiated, how the PL reacted, and Urshiger obviously just held up his end of the bargain too. Uh, I mean, getting three kills, 22 assists, I mean, he was rocking it. And I just, I really don't know if there's any clear weak point of this team until we see them more on, on the defensive. On the offensive, though, Energy Pacemaker, they seem unstoppable, and I can't wait to see what they bring to game two. Yeah, I totally agree. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be going into game two in just a couple minutes here. This is, the once again, the I-League Chinese Qualifiers. Thank you once again for tuning in and joining us here on Beyond the Summit. If you enjoyed the commentary, look us up. Twitter.com slash blazecasting, twitter.com slash flying zebra dota. And uh, we will bring you guys game two in just a few minutes here on Beyond the Summit.